Hello, Solaja here. In this video, I'll be showing how to add registers to the computer and how to get them to store a value. Since my last video, I've made a number of changes to the computer I've been using for these examples. I've changed the number of bits here from 6 to 8. I've moved the two opcode bits across to, so as far as branching is concerned, these two bits here no longer serve a purpose, but they will for other functions. I've also tidied this section up a little bit, and that allows the bus to stretch out in a straight line. This is the basic framework I'll be using for to add the registers onto. The opcode I've decided to use for this is 0, 1. For branching we used 1, 1. So you can see here 0, 1 is already selected on the bus from the instruction up there. That allows the line that comes out here to be dark, which acts as a uh, override for this mux here. So whenever it's dark it allows it to select a register. These two inputs here which come from the um, first two bits are the address inputs to the decoder. So you can see here dark dark or zero zero highlights the first one. If I'm zero one that will highlight the second one. The four middle bits between here and here, they come out and are put onto this bus. I've made it a vertical bus just because I'm used to using vertical uh, buses and it saves a lot of space because things can be stacked up. Um, oh yeah. This is very important here, not so much in this episode, but, but it will be very important later down the track. What this is, is it's basically a mechanism that whenever this line here is high, or in other words, we're not saving a value to the registers, or not loading a value from an instruction, I should say, then these torches here will all turn red, and because there's another set of torches there, it will force all these pins to be dark to low, so nothing can be written. I'll just give an example of that now. I break that. It goes dark, dark. That's the wrong opcode. So this goes red, and all these torches here turn on, forcing all those uh, four to be dark. Now, the way this is going to be hooked up I'll say first that this is the um, edge triggered flip flop we'll be using and um, this is the enable that'll be connected through to here so whenever this goes from dark to uh, light on a falling no light to dark falling edge it'll save a value so falling edge saves a value falling edge saves the value there. So it was when it was bright there and it had a falling edge that became bright and that's uh, the value that will be saved. This value here uh, from the uh, decoder is going to act like the enabler or the clock I guess you could say and this value here is going to come from this. I'm going to uh, put little bridges across and get pull the values over to there. Now this is only one, um, one flip-flop. There's going to be four of these in each register and they're going to be stacked on top of each other and on top of that there's going to be four registers. So in total there's going to be 16 of those flip-flops. Alright, I'll now show you how to make one of the flip-flops. To build the edge-triggered flip-flop we're going to add blocks here, 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 there and there. And I'm going to put some redstone across there which will let us put those blocks in. Now I'll add the rest of the torches and redstone. I forgot a block here. Never mind. And 
and that should be it except for one thing Oops. this I think it's that one yep this repeater here oops has to be set to the maximum so now when I take this torch away this line here should go red and it does so that's how you build a one of these flip-flops edge triggered uh, this is falling edge triggered if you want to you can make it uh, rising edge triggered by just doing that now now that should go red as I um, put the torch down rather than pick it up yep but um, for this we will be using the uh, falling edge triggered so put the torch down now when I take the torch away that should go dark and it does I didn't mention this before but the line that comes out of the opcode here actually goes into an OR gate with the clock this just forces uh, this just means that you can only load a value to a register if the clock is also low this isn't really necessary but it just helps sync everything up I've built the main structure here that's going to mount the uh, flip-flops which will become the registers if I come from over here you can see that that segment there is one tower and it's all connected to the bit that came out here before so that means all these bits that one that one that one and that one are all connected to that bottom bit down there if you can see it that's because we want the entire register to save a value at the same time so all the flip-flops in a register must have the exact same um, clock signal being input to them the same goes for this one those ones are all connected those ones are all connected and those ones are all connected and they're all connected to their um, resp respective uh, output from the decoder if I come up here you can see that the other set of uh, wires that come out come from the bus which has the value that we want to store on the register so if over here uh, at the moment there is a there's a high spot here that should be the bottom one and you can see the bottom one is highlighted then nothing or I should say high low 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 because over here we have high low 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 on the full middle ones now if one of these were to uh, have a falling edge like go from high to low then that value would be stored on whatever register so all that's left to do now is to get these and copy them such that those two points there line up with those two points there and to do it for um, each of those 16 plugs if you want to call them that alright I've put the flip-flops on and you, sh you can see register 0, register 1, register 2 and register 3 you can see how I've put them on there they're all attached to the um, inputs and these are the outputs here let's write a little program for it what's the opcode again? Zero one. zero 01 zero 01 and after those two let's branch let's terminate the program with a branch out of memory so that's branching to line 15 and there's only 10 lines so it'll um, t be the same as terminating the program but here opcodes are zero 01 and zero 01 let's write two registers 0 and registers 1 let's it's the wrong one 
let's make register 0 all ones and register 1 only the uh, top two can be one. So you can see that that got written then, and now the top two here should be written. So uh, that's an example of data being loaded from an instruction into a register. And I've, uh, I'll do one more demonstration in just a second. This is just a little screen I've made so it's easier to see which registers hold it, which values. Let's make a couple of instructions. Just okay, so we're going to write a lot of values to the registers in this example. Uh, register 0, let's write 1, register 1, 2 ones, register 2, Come back to register zero. Hold those values. Okay. Um Hopefully if you've been following you'll be at least vaguely aware of the pattern I've put in. And now that I've set that running it should form some uh, triangles. And now it should loop because that's the end of the program and the pattern will start again. So that's a simple program that just keeps loading different values into the register, into the registers. Remember register 1 is those four, I mean register 0 is those four, register 1 is these four, register 2 and register 3. Thank you for watching the video.